Hello YouTubers. Today's March 18th and uh, thought I'd get out and uh, shoot some YouTubes today on some other solar projects that I've done. And uh, if you're watching this, it's March 18th and uh, the world's upside down right now with this Corona thing going on. So anyway, I thought I'd get out and get some fresh air and uh, shoot some YouTubes on some of my other solar projects that I did. So what we'll do is we'll cover uh, another solar array I have on the property. And what I'm doing is, I call it solar averaging. Um, I live in a very wooded area. So I have different arrays on the land in uh, different positions. So I can capture as much sun as I can uh, during the day. But I have one system uh, that I did about a year ago and I'm using it for an off-grid uh, well pump basically. So I'm on well water here and uh, figured, you know, when we have a snowstorm for a couple days or if there's a major crisis like what's going on right now where everybody's hoarding toilet paper and paper towels and cases of water and that sort of thing, it'd sure be nice to be able to run the well pump if we were to lose, uh, you, you know, lose the electricity um, coming in from the power grid. So basically I put a system together and uh, I'm running my well pump uh, totally off grid right now. And uh, the system I'm about to show you, you could put this on uh, a cabin, you could put it on your house as emergency power backup. Uh, but in this case, I'm just using it uh, for my well pump and it's working really good. Um, I also have a wind generator too that's kind of chipping in a little bit when the wind's blowing. And I'll, I'll show you a video of that. I got some real nice footage from the other day when it was real windy and the clouds are blowing over um, and you're looking up at the tower. It's pretty cool with big blue sky with the clouds blowing pretty fast by. So it almost looks like I photoshopped it. But anyway, um, the system works really well. Um, the neat thing is, is that again, loss of electricity. I still have uh, as much well water as I need still to take a shower, flush a toilet, that sort of thing. And then a little added benefit too is, uh, you know, it reduces my electric bill a little bit of running a uh, 220 volt uh, well pump. And also, if you guys notice uh, on your power bills, maybe uh, on my power bill, I have uh, an item called Power Factor or PF, and I'm being charged kilowatt hours uh, from our local uh, electrical co op for that. And what that is, is um, in engineering school, I was taught uh, Eli the Iceman. So basically, volts is E, um, induction is L, and I is current, and C is capacitance. Eli um, basically means voltage lags current in an inductive circuit. So that means you have a, a motor spinning, and all motors uh, are induction motors. And uh, examples around your house of an induction motor would be, hey, the well pump, uh, your washer and dryer, anything spinning a motor, the uh, blower on your furnace. And basically there's not enough capacitance to make a power factor of one. And the company, uh, the, you know, your utility company charges it extra to, to make up that difference. And uh, ICE, I-C-E means current lags voltage in a capacitive circuit. So big companies um, that have big motors running, they typically add capacitance uh, to balance the inductive load from their motors that are spinning in a factory, that sort of thing, to get try to get as close to a power factor of one as they can. Um, and that uh, reduces their power bills from utility. So. Anyway, by me powering it, uh, the well pump off grid, basically I'm saving a few pennies here and there uh, when I'm running my uh, motor that's uh, pumping the water. So anyway, geeking out a bit. This is my geek section uh, for the video, but uh, let's go take a look at the, uh, the solar array. Again, you can put this on anything. You can put it on your camper. Um, you can put it on your boat. Um, you'll see the uh, midnight solar uh, charge controller, MPPT charge controller, I'm uses actually, uh, they make one for marine applications in white. Uh, I have a black one, I'll show you that in my mechanical room. But uh, anyway, that's it. Let's go take a look at the solar array. Okay, so let's go check out my uh, solar panels that I've got out here for, uh, again, running a well pump. And you see we've had some snow. Uh, this is March 22nd. Still have the corona thing going on. You can see up through the trees is 
14,000 footer, that's Mon Evans. And uh, amazing ski conditions. The problem is all the ski resorts are closed for a couple weeks now because of the corona. But uh, anyway, so you, here's three solar panels. I think they're about 150 watts a piece. And they're all stuck together and I have a mass mounted into the ground. And I'll show you the back of these in a second. But you could bolt these on your garden shed. You put them up on the roof of your house, on top of your camper, whatever. Pretty simple process here. So, so let's uh, trump through the deep snow here. And uh, let's take a look at the back of the panel. All right, so here's the back of the panel. And what I did is these masks are basically just, these are uh, that galvanized fence post for chain link fences that you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. And now I have them painted green. I primed them real good and painted them green so they kind of match the surroundings. But I uh, went on eBay and I found these adjustable mounts, which are really cool. And uh, goes right on top of the galvanized steel post. And the neat thing is I can adjust them for different times of the year. So you can see right now I have a couple stop nuts. Right now I have it uh, pretty much for spring and winter. So panels at about 35, 40 degrees, something like that, because we're in Colorado. And then what I could do is loosen this nut and the one on the other side, and then tilt the panel back and it'll go up against this stop nut which puts my angle at about 10, 10 degrees uh, for the summertime, so I get maximum efficiency. So I have two of those, and I think I only paid maybe 30 or $40, but again, look on eBay for adjustable solar panel mounts, mass mount or pipe mount or whatever. Um, and then I took the panels, laid them upside down on the garage floor, and uh, put a couple bolts, you know, bolted them together. Um, and then I got this angle iron, I mean, uh, aluminum and angle from Home Depot or Lowe's. I think that's like an inch and a half. And I just have two stringers coming across um, all the three panels all the way to the end. So I just need two lengths of that. And then I have one down at the bottom. And then I bolted it on and then spaced it so it would bolt right into the top of this adjustable mount. Okay. Now I have this set at zero degrees, but I guess if you loosen this, this would rotate, but I don't use that part. So uh, that's it. And then uh, again, the panels are in series. So I get the maximum voltage into my uh, midnight solar um, MPPT charge controller. It's called the kid unit and I'll show that in the mechanical room. But I have them all through series. And then I have uh, basically a DC fuse inside here. Uh, disconnect and then uh, the wires coming into it and then the wires going to the house um, that's just I think it's 12 gauge uh, cable um, that could be uh, set on top of the ground and that runs into my mechanical room and it's just I think it's three conductor I'm only using two for the DC or positive and negative but uh, anyway these are the uh, the Renogy panels which I've had these running so I was wrong it's 100 watts 22.4 volts open collector so three in series would be putting that maybe 66 volts something like that um, and they work really well the neat thing about all these solar projects there's no maintenance on this I mean these things just run and run and run uh, I might take a, you know a squeegee to them once once a year something like that most of the time the rain and the snow you know keeps them clean and as you can see right now, snow just slides right off at this angle for the winter time. So anyway, that's it. Um, let's go take a look at uh, the brains in the mechanical room. Well, on my wind uh, generator, and as you can see, uh, we got a pretty good breeze today and it's, it's going pretty good. Speeds up and slows down. Um, what it is, is uh, I picked up a radio tower from a neighbor's yard sale for about 50 bucks and uh, put it up and it was normally a 40 footer, but I took a couple sections out. So uh, it's probably 24 feet in the air. And uh, if we go up the hill, it's mounted on the hill, highest point in my yard amongst the trees and that sort of thing. And uh, here's the base of the tower. Uh, and that's one cubic yard of concrete. So three foot square concrete. 
was quite heavy and the base mounted and then going up the tower uh, we got the, uh, the wind generator from Missouri uh, Solar and uh, probably right now it's generating uh, three phase electric and probably put not I'm thinking 500 watts so uh, that's pretty much it just mounts on a two inch mast and it's got the big tail on it so it can spin around and keep faced into the wind and uh, that's pretty much it uh, three conductor wire running into my mechanical room in the house so anyway let's go in inside and uh, see the, uh, the part that's in the mechanical room okay continuing on let's take a look at my mechanical room um, so the solar panels uh, come in on this wire right here and this is a midnight solar S-O-L-A-R, Midnight, uh, N-I-T-E instead of N-I-G-H-T, so Midnight Solar. And these guys are fantastic. Um, look at my other YouTubes. I have one on my RV. I have a Midnight Solar uh, Classic, uh, which is the big unit um, in my RV. And uh, between these guys and Victron Energy, um, they, they got it covered. But... This unit is their KID unit, they call it KID, KID, and it is an MPPT charge controller, so maximum power point tracking. So basically it's varying the resistance to maximize the wattage output, uh, different conditions of the day, either the wind or the solar. So, and it's totally fused, has light indicators uh, here on the left, has your menu selection, easy to program, it already comes with the fuses, and you can put this really anywhere uh, in your RV, house, whatever. Um, this is also intended for marine use on boats and ships and that sort of thing. Um, and it comes with a uh, gimbal mount um, so you can mount it uh, like your depth finder on a boat um, and tilt it. It also comes in white too if you want to get a white one for your marine application. Real simple. You just got two wires coming in positive and negative coming into the charge controller from your solar panels, whatever you got out there. Um, and then you have your positive and negative uh, just coming out into your battery or your cutoff switch or whatever. So, so right now, uh, that's that part of it. And then what was frustrating on YouTube is trying to figure out what kind of inverter I needed to run my well pump. So my well pump right now is 220 volts. It's a one horsepower unit and I'm 165 feet in depth and I could not find you know the right sizing for inverter on YouTubes or, or just on, on the internet trying to do some research but I did some calculations I came up with with basically what I needed so I'm going to tilt my phone here so I ended up going with Ames Power and these guys do a lot of industrial type inverters and pretty heavy duty you pay a little bit extra money but uh, the quality I have found has been amazing. So this is a pretty large unit. There's my hand up against it. And it's extruded aluminum. In. And what it does is you take your 12 volts in, um, or you probably get a 48 volt unit or 24 volts. And what it's doing is um, converting, you know, your DC power into AC. Um, and this is a 220 volt and it's a 5,000 watt. So, and the part number is PKRM 5, kil, you know, 5,000 watts and then uh, 240 volts. Okay. So, output capacity is uh, 5,000 watts uh, at 220 volts. And I like these guys. On the top, you could just terminate it right here on this termination strip and run. And I have this going into a transfer switch, which I'll show you here in a minute. And then it's got some different settings up here um, for your different voltage settings. And then uh, your off on switch. And then it gives you an LED light, kind of where your voltage is sitting at right now. Okay. So very solid. I mean, this thing is built. Um, so right now, if I look at my display, right now I'm on float. Um, so I'm producing 28 watts. And I got 13.5 volts is what my battery's reading right now. And then um, my solar, you know, it's going to 
flip back and forth and give me output. So I'm probably getting, you know, 30 some volts um, out of the, uh, the solar panel. So actually 61 volts. So when we were out in the field, it said 60 something volts. So, yep, it was 61 volts coming in. And I'll just let that cycle. And then there's the, you know, the kid unit. CPU, temperature, it's doing all that stuff. Um, and uh, so I'm in float mode, 28 watts right now. We'll let it flip one more time here. So 61.7 volts is what I'm getting off the panel. And my battery's sitting at, uh, you know, 13.6 volts. So from there, you definitely want to be safe. So I have a cutoff switch, um, kind of like what I use in my RV. That comes off of here. Um, and then what I do is I have four AGM batteries down here, all in parallel. So these are AGM batteries, which stands for absorbed glass mat. So this is a lot safer um, than lead acid battery. I guess you could use car batteries, but I'm in a mechanical room here. I don't want any, you know, explosive gases coming off what you have on a lead acid. And the AGMs uh, have different advantages. They can't freeze, that sort of thing. And and again, they don't output, uh, you know, considerable gas like lead acid does. Now, so you got your lead acid, step above is your AGM batteries, absorbed glass mat. And then the ultimate is to go to uh, a lithium iron phosphate battery. And if you uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, look at my YouTube on my RV. I have four Battleborn uh, LiPo batteries, which is uh, a lithium iron phosphate, which is probably going to be an upgrade I'm going to do to these at some point in time. But I got these on Craigslist. These came out of a cell site, and uh, the cell companies uh, use AGM batteries in their cell sites. And uh, periodically, I think it's every year and a half or so, I might be wrong, they change them out. And uh, these are available, and uh, they're already tested. And I found some guy on, on uh, Craigslist that uh, basically pulls them, makes sure they're okay, you know, tests them for their voltage and output and all that stuff, and then sells them. And I think I picked these up for like 75 bucks a piece. And they're about 75 amp hours, something like that. Um, not totally usable. You know, you don't want to deplete it down below 50% like like a, like you can with a lithium uh, lithium battery. You could take it all the way down to zero without damaging. So, but these work extremely well. Um, and they're in parallel. So what you're going to do is link the batteries, the negative side, coming back on one side, and then go up into, uh, this is an ANL fuse. So I uh, have it fused. And then the positive side, um, actually that was the positive side. And then the negative side, you're going to take off the other side of the battery bank. So when you have these in parallel, you want negative coming off of one side. And then you want to pull the positive off of the other side of the uh, battery jumpers. So anyway, that comes into my a &L fuse. And then I could take the batteries offline right now. I just flip the switch and it goes off. Okay, so that's the well pump. Um, the other thing I did is that since I have excess power in an emergency, and this may be the way you want to set it up in your house, forget about the well pump, forget about the 220 volt inverter and all that stuff, and just do this with the Midnight Kid or use a Victron Energy, there's others out there, and then come into just a 115 volt inverter. So this is kind of upside down, but um, this is a 2300 watt, 115 volt inverter that I have running. And in an emergency or whatever, if I wanted to run something in the mechanical room, um, I could plug into my normal 115 volt socket. So I'll go ahead, uh, where's the on switch on this? Turn it on and it's coming up and running. And uh, my battery's 12.69 volts. And what's cool with this unit uh, is you get a remote key fob. So if you're upstairs, you wanna kick the voltage on, or if you're in an RV, want to kick it off and on you could just do it with that remote control which is pretty cool came with it so this wasn't a whole lot of money um, but I've got two of these uh, I use another one for another application and they are really robust and this is made by power something or other um, and uh, I'll shoot that sticker if you flip it around but uh, find these on eBay Craigslist that sort of thing but it works really well okay, I'll turn that off and then on the wind side, uh, I showed you the, the video of the, the wind generator I have out there, three phase coming in. Um, here's my switch, and this is from Midnight Wind, or Missouri Wind and Solar. Um, go on their website, they got all kinds of stuff, but they make some good stuff. Um, and I've got a, a toggle switch here. So if I want 
there's three conductors coming off of the tower from that that basically generator out there three phase so there's three wires coming into this and when it's free if i kick it into the normal position all three conductors are just sitting there open they're not tied to a load they're not tied to each other they're sitting open and that would just be free spin now if you're working on it if i'm going up the tower i'll put it on break mode and what that does is it ties all three leads together just like if you wire knotted them together and it creates maximum load and prevents the uh, blades from spinning. And the blades on that, I have five uh, carbon fiber uh, blades that are really efficiently designed. Um, so it does a pretty good job. So I'll put it in uh, run mode, means run. I'm going into, and I've got it in this case here. Let's see if I can get it open. But I have a, uh, basically a rectifier. So that's a, a bridge rectifier that's taking my three conductor in and then giving me my 12 and a half volts out. Um, so it's converting my three phase AC to DC through the use of diodes and there's heat sinks and stuff on it. And then that goes out to the, uh, the charge controller. Okay, so that covers that. So let's go over here and look at my well pump. So uh, your well pump, I've got to my captive air tank. There's my pressure switch uh, down below. Get that in the light here. Um, that kicks off and on based on the pressure. Um, and then I've got my uh, controller here for my pump module, which everybody usually has. So again, uh, pump set that's 163 watts, and I do have a one horsepower, and this is my Franklin electric control box, okay? Uh, from there, your power's gonna come in here. So what I did is I went on eBay, and I found a really nice 220 volt transfer switch. Um, so right now the power comes in off the grid into this box um, for my sub panel on my breaker uh, for the grid power comes in and then goes onto this leg of the switch down here. And then I put a plug into the top of the Ames inverter and this is one of those twist plug 220 volt twist plugs. Put that on there and then I just leave it in solar mode. So I've been running for, gosh, a year and a half or so, um, totally off grid on solar. Um, so, um, and then I could turn it off or if I'm servicing my solar or something happens to my, whatever I have over there, batteries or whatever, um, then I can go on to grid. So just click in a down position and then I'm on grid. So IREA is actually our electrical co-op here in Colorado. So this is made by Reliance uh, Controls and um, in Racine, Washington, I guess, or Wisconsin, Racine, Wisconsin. And then there's their website, reliancecontrols.com. So this works really well, really efficient. But again, I'll wrap up the YouTube here. And um, so I'll put it back into solar mode and shut the door. And then I got some more stickers on here. Okay. So anyway, it works really well, and uh, again, uh, you could use this for your well pump, use it for something else, but it works really well. Um, so anyway, uh, hopefully this might get some more bits of information that you don't see on other YouTubes. And uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. I have a ton of other hot rod builds and solar builds and other stuff that I do. Um, that are available for you that uh, would help you out with some of your projects. So anyway, that's it. Again, hit the subscribe button and uh, have a great day. Thanks. Bye.